A recent UCS report singled out Region 1, an NRC report, singled out Region 1, our region, as particularly negligent in their response to, quote, near miss, unquote, nuclear accidents. Can you say why this is? In that, in that recent report, we had two chapters. One chapter that looked at good things that the NRC did last year, not the best things, but good things that we wanted to recognize. We also had a chapter that looked at bad things that the NRC did. None of the good things came out of NRC Region 1, and none of the bad things occurred anywhere else. <laughs> I think part of the reason left the NRC on July 2nd, July 2nd, 2010, when the former regional administrator for Region 1 retired from the agency. Uh, Bill Dean is currently the regional administrator for Region 1. He's a much better guy. He, he's much more concerned about the job he's doing. It will take him a, a while to turn that ship around. Uh, we're hopeful that we can see replication of that in the future. I, I hope, I, I assume that you also think that. Region 1 is just a, a bad regu regulator. UCS doesn't like me to swear. Um, I don't know why. We've, we tried to call attention to it. The NRC, when we point that out to senior officials at the NRC, they defend Region 1. Well, they're not that bad. It's because of all, all the attention they get. Um, but no, they're, they're not good by any, any measure. They dress well. I don't mean to throw out everything. <laughs> we need, we, we, by putting a spotlight on it, we hope that that will help fix that problem. I have a Region 1 story, personal story. Um, back in 1990, I blew the whistle on my employer. I didn't plan on that. I went to the president and told him about a problem. He fired me. I went to Region 1, and they deliberately botched the inspection, and I have the Inspector General's report to prove it, uh, unredacted. And uh, the person who botched the inspection is now in charge of radiation monitoring for Region 1. Almost a different topic. Mr. Gunderson, what is happening now to the containment water in Japan, and why is the media so quiet? And parenthetically, most of my friends do not know what is happening, happening there. Yeah, the, the, the plan, I'll, I'm hold this up so I don't, uh, the, the, the plan was not to pour water in the top, let it run out the bottom, and collect in the basement. That is not the plan to cool the reactor. They, the plan was that it would circulate and you, you cool it. You take it out, cool it, pump it back in, take it out, cool it, pump it back in. When the pumps fail, of course, that, that was no longer available. So now you've got water being poured in at the top of the reactor, running out the bottom, collecting on the floor um, and, uh, e in enormous quantities, hundreds of tons per day. Of, of this of this water. Now the water uh, is in direct contact with nuclear fuel. It, the cladding's gone, so it's in contact with cesium and strontium, but also plutonium and, and, and some other nasty actors. Um, the water's building up in basements and is leaking into the ground table. It's hard to imagine the concrete doesn't have cracks in it after this seismic event that it just went through. Um, now, uh, Arriva, a French company, is building a massive uh, system to try to filter this out. Uh, they tried it last week. They thought it would uh, remove about 80% of the contaminants. In fact, it removed about 20%, so it's not working as designed. Uh, but the question will be, uh, eventually, what hasn't leaked into the water table, and they're already seeing it in the water table, so what hasn't leaked into the water table uh, is going to run through these filters, and now you've got filters with plutonium in it. Mm. And what do you do with the filters? Is the, is the next question that has to be asked, and, and the press is not asking that question. But yes, all of you or any of you might have a comment on this. The second part of this question, why is the media so quiet? I mean, do we all have that feeling that the media is just not staying on this? Any, yeah. any ideas why? Tweeting. Tweeting. Yeah. Tweeting. It's the 24-hour news cycle. Well, I guess from our standpoint, we're glad that the shift is changed a little bit recently. We're, I'm not unmindful that, of the problems that Japanese are going through, but we're focused on U.S. reactors, and we see that a lot of reporters in the United States are now asking questions about the plants in their backyards. And I, I, with no disrespect to the Japanese, I'd rather have U.S. media focus on plants and problems at U.S. reactors, and we're seeing a shift in that in the last few weeks. 
use it. And we think that's a good thing because we want to put a spotlight on the problems at U.S. reactors and hopefully fix some of these before they, they cause us problems. That's One little question. My, my wife Maggie runs our, our business, and for years she's been asking me to do these Mr. Science videos on our, on our site. I said, nobody wants to listen to them. Well, after Fukushima, um, we, we started, and uh, uh, we've had five million hits in the last two and a half months. So clearly there's a need there that's not being fulfilled by, by mainstream media. And um, it's unfortunate that it has to be a so there's only a given amount of time in, in media and that switch from the drama of Fukushima maybe helping us learn lessons here, but I think the media can't do both. What I'd like to do is ask two more questions, prepared questions, and then open this up to a general discussion. There are long questions, but they're not that long. Um, this is specifically addressed to Dave, but anybody can answer it. According to Reuters, the IAEA is in process of conducting an Operational Safety Review, or OSART, visit at Seabrook Station from June 7th to June 23rd. This is reportedly only the seventh OSART visit at a U.S. nuclear power plant in the past 29 years. What do you see as the impotence and significance of this IAEA review? Uh, the IAEA does reviews like that at virtually every nuclear power plant power plant in the country. It takes them a while to cycle through the 400 plus reactors. The, the one I'm most familiar with was one they did at the Tower Cliffs nuclear plant in Maryland a few years ago. They came in and evaluated, kicked the tires, inspected the plant, and gave the plant a, a stellar rating. Very good. The plant was shut down six months later and remained shut down for more than two years to fix a litany of safety problems that somehow escaped the IAEA's cognizance. They might have been hiding disguises at the pump or something, I don't know. But when you have a list of problems so long, it takes two years to fix, and IAEA didn't stumble over even one of them. I'm a little worried about the, the scrutiny, how robust their scrutiny is. Um, I assume that they found the plan, but apparently they <laughs> didn't do much more than that. If you, if you look at their charter, they have one of those promote and regulate charters, uh, with which, of course, Thank you. All right, last prepared question. In your this is today also. In your report on nuclear plant safety in 2010, you outlined a number of issues with Progress Energy, including a number of near misses, years of problematic failures. These are all quotes. Poor maintenance of problematic equipment and inadequate operator performance and poor training, to name a few. Why is Progress Energy still in business? And what faith can the public have in the NRC giving its willingness, willingness to allow such fragrant disregard for basic standards? What can we, the citizens, do to bring pressure on the NRC to issue and enforce meaningful relations? The, uh, it was announced, I think it was yesterday, that the, one of Progress Energy's plants, the uh, Crystal River plant in Florida, may not be restarted. They had a problem with concrete when they shut down in September of 2009. They managed to break their containment structure twice. Um, and now, after fit, trying to fix it twice, they made it determine that it's just they thrown too much money into that rat hole and they may give up. That was one of the Progress Energy's problems. They had, on the anniversary of Three Mile Island, they had a, the most serious event of last year at their Robinson plant where they had two separate fires uh, both caused by the same reason. They had an electrical cable that shorted out, started the fire, they put out the fire, re-energized the cable without fixing anything, and were somewhat surprised when it started a second fire. <laughs> they also had trouble at their Brunswick plant where they had an assist where they were doing, they had an actual emergency. They discharged the halon system, fire suppression gas into the diesel generator building, declared an emergency. Part of that was to call in responders because it wasn't during the day. They had an automatic, they put in this brand new system right out of the bag to automatically dial up all these workers at home so they could come to the plant. Great technology, nobody knew how to turn it on. So instead of getting people to the plant within an hour and a half like they were supposed to, it took them that long to figure out how to turn the thing on. And it took them another hour and a half for the workers to get to the plant. So that NRC wasn't real happy about that. The, 
what we've asked at the NRC to do is when you see all these near misses coming from one company, you might want to look at whether there's a, what role the corporate hand is playing in that pro those problems. They don't do that. The easiest way to miss a problem is not to look. We'd like the NRC to, it's pretty obvious that that company, not pretty, that company may be having a problem or just the worst luck that anybody's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> we think the NRC ought to step in and determine whether it's, it's the, the company's having problems or they're just having bad luck. But they need to know because that could affect a lot of people. But you've got to do that review. I, I honestly don't know why the NRC doesn't ask questions that are pretty obvious. That's why we try to ask them. They treat our questions as rhetorical when they don't answer them. Thank you. Hey, why don't we open this up to sort of general discussion and general questions, sir? I just want to know how concerned do you think Bostonians should be that Vermont Yankees' crowded spent fuel pool lies only 18 miles from the open waters of the Quabbin Reservoir and even closer to the recharge watershed? Addressing that to someone in particular. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, we got, um, you know, spent fuel pool risks there that affect the water supply for metropolitan Boston, five million or so. I, I think probably Boston ought to buy from my Yankee and shut it down. The MDC <laughs> has it a budget. Yeah. They were looking for a buyer and couldn't find uh, one. So <laughs> maybe the MDC looked at the map and realized no, that. You have, you have the same problem. 28 miles away, right here with Pilgrim. I, I, but that's all going to blow offshore, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think look closer to home and, and you'll find it here at Pilgrim. Really, Seabrook isn't much far behind us. I would agree. Every, every plant in the problem, every plant in the country's got a problem. The boiling water reactor is a little bit more vulnerable to it, but even the pressurized water reactors like Seabrook, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. All we got to do is transfer the fuel into dry cask. We don't make the problem go away, but we significantly lessen it. We need to do that. Before I take another question, because I see obviously some people are leaving, the green question and answer things are going to be handed to you. It seems on the way out, um, but I also want to say there's a much there's about to be a much longer version of that with many more facts. It's going to be on our website, on the C10 website, sir. I don't own a nuclear power plant where I work for the regulator, but I do nuclear safety analysis, and fire protection is what actually we address. When this accident happened, I was very concerned. It, it was a disaster. My daughter lived in California. School teacher, special ed, she would send me emails, Dad, what should I do, and this and that. So I, I felt it was important to educate the public and what, what you are doing. So I did similar things. I provided a presentation. I went to see my congressman, John Tierney, Scott Brown. I also provided a presentation at Bedford Public Library. It was taped. They did a fantastic job. It's available on Bedford TV. Take a look at it. It's a little bit different angle, okay? And I'm putting the facts on the table. And just for your education, go to Bedford Public Library, click video, what happened at Fukushima, could it happen in the U.S., what measures we have taken, and everything else. The presentation is good, the, the pictures are good. It's another point of you looking at it. I'm not anti-nuclear, I'm not pro-nuclear, I'm for safe nuclear. So it is important to do that. For the record, what happened at Fukushima is a disaster. No ifs and buts. Could it happen yet? There are some differences between US plan and them. There are modifications that has been done. Hard vent that they don't have is what we have here. And that could have helped them. They don't have it, they, they don't. And, but again, I'm not saying, you know, even with the hardened vent, it could have. What happened was the 14 feet, uh, 14 meters tsunami versus 6 meters tsunami. I'm sorry, 14 meters versus 6 and all that. So those are the facts we need, we need to put on the table. It's easy to say shut down every nuclear today. We cannot do that. Safe nuclear is the best nuclear option we have for the next 50 wow. years until we come up with wow. another alternative. So again, no, no, I, I appreciate that. Excuse me, we're going to have one speaker at a time. And again, please take the time, take a look at them. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Take, Sir, one speaker at a time, show respect. Uh, I, I, res I don't agree with you. Yeah, I respect what David has done. I've known him. He doesn't know me. He used to work at NIPA. I was right next to you. You, you don't know me. You, so we are a colleague, okay? It's just that, you know, as a professional, I'm not even a nuclear engineer, I'm an electrical engineer. Just take a look at that video, see what you can learn from that. Education is the best thing you can do. My daughter was ready to buy iodine pills. 
And I said, no, what you are getting there is equivalent to having one-third banana. Yeah. Yeah. But, sir, I have a question. Are we talking about Bedford, Massachusetts? Bedford, Massachusetts. Yeah, I have the Vimo site. If anybody is interested, that's a direct... Can you give it to me? Yeah, I mean, you can go directly. Okay, it's uh, vimo.com, 2348773. But if you go to bedfordtv.com, click on video. Fukushima presentation is there. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm being honest with you. My job is what David says. Bronze Ferry Fire is what we are trying to address today, even after 30 years. Okay. So, Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. Sir.